I guess things just went to hell after I left. This river's deep. We ain't exactly overloaded with dry clothes, Nick. Hello, boy. Bye, Laura Gus. Here I found her. I imagine she's sitting right out in front of a tent right now. Look at that. I swear, Gus, we near gave you up. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're all still alive. You catch that bandit? Oh, he slipped by me. But I got a few of his friends, though. She all right, Gus? She's gonna need her privacy a while, yet uh, she went through quite an ordeal. You boys get with these cattle, boy, they scatter. Good. Right over here. I'm glad you're back, because I missed just listening to you. Yep, me too, Gus. I thank you, fellas. At least my pigs made it all right. <laughs> Where are you planning to leave her? Leave her? I have no intention of leaving her. What's the word on Jake? They got mad and rode off after you left. Then he going to Fort Worth. And now you have become this gal's caretaker. Yeah, I guess I have. Hell, she's not even one you're after, neither is she? No, she ain't. That's true, too. So what are you gonna do when you get up to Old Lala and find out Clara's still a happily married woman don't even remember you? Uh, hell, I believe, uh... That'd break my heart, would go. Dear Peach, Roscoe Brown was killed by a bad outlaw. And so was Joe. A girl named Janie was also killed. I don't know much about her, but Roscoe said he met her in the woods. I am going on to Ogallala to look for Ellie. I do not know when I will be back. so fickle as to take up with that old Mexican. I'd have made bacon at him a long time ago. Lori, darling. Come here. I got Lori, you smell as fresh as the morning. how you keep fresh out in these raw parts. I'm a shameful sight, ain't I? <laughs> it's Woodrow's fault. He wouldn't let me bring my tailor on his trip. Now, here it is, a beautiful morning. You're about to cry. Why? Now, Lori. We're an honest pair, ain't we? Now tell me what's wrong. What's wrong? I feel like you don't want me no more, Gus. You ain't even asked me for a poke since, since then. Shh. Lord, come on. I... Well, you can have one if you want. I won't charge you nothing. Well, that's neighborly. In that case, I'll take, what, five or six or... Ten or twelve. <laughs> no, the truth is, I thought you'd want to stay clear of such doings for a while. See, that's natural. See, you best take your time. You best take your time. It doesn't matter how much time. <laughs> Good morning to you, Gus. Good morning, Miss Lorena. Uh, Paul made you some breakfast. He asked me to bring it over for you. What is it, bugs? 
folks. A pole cooked or anything, ain't that right? Oh, yeah, Gus, that's right. Bugs? Oh, yes, ma'am. Sometimes you cook things like grasshoppers. <laughs> yes, ma'am, ain't that funny? Newt, why don't you sit and have coffee with us? Come on. Oh, no, Gus, I'd best get on back to the herd. All right, tell Poe thank you for the breakfast. Okay, I will. Thank you for bringing it over. Well, yes, ma'am, and thank you for... Thank you for... Go on, Newt, before you step on your tongue. Thank you. Too hard to take that bunch. Thought we was gonna rob banks. I don't remember nothing about stealing horses. You got something against stealing horses? Don't happen to be my line of work, that's all. Oh, you ain't too old to learn something new now, are you? If you are, we can leave you right here, dead in the ground. I won't tolerate no shirkers. Man's feeling a bit bloody today, ain't he? Ain't he? <laughs> you coming? I guess if you watch, you'll find out, won't you? Come on when you hear the shooting. Why can't I go? I can shoot good as Roy. Hell, that ain't much. Roy couldn't hit his foot if it were tied to a tree. No, we're gonna let Jake shoot him anyhow. Ain't that right, Jake? Doing back there, Spoon. Fighting's up here. They got Frog Lip. Frog, you hit? I am. Where are you going? Better go round up them horses we stole. We want them, don't we? Best stay here. Unless you think you're bulletproof. Roy? You and Eddie go gather up them horses. I never thought they'd get you, Frog. Shoot him and go on. Shoot Frog? He's the one with the bullet in his gut, ain't he? Shoot him and be done with it. Well, I'd hate to shoot Frog. You shoot him, Roy. Dan told you to do it, Eddie. Would you like to shoot him, Jake? I've known him all my life. No, I wouldn't care to. No one's much help. Oh, damn it. What a bunch of old ladies. Uh, 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 
Go on, gather up them horses. Guess it was just Frog's unlucky day, huh? Yeah. I guess it can happen to anybody. Can it, Spoon? Now. I thought it was one of our boys, but it ain't. Beats found him up the trail several miles. Been shot twice. Still alive? Just barely. What do you say? He said horse thieves. Murdering horse thieves. But that. Let's just keep the cattle headed north, keep somebody out in front, look for water, and get this boy better over there in them cottonwood trees. Sir. Oh, is it Indians? Horse thieves. Hey, you come back. What you doing, dude? Come on. He's going to track them. I'm going to have to go, too, Lori. Well, I'm going to go with you. I can keep up. Oh, you'll be perfectly safe with the wagon. I'm going to have Dish look after you. Gus. Nope, I can't let a horse thief off, particularly one that's killed the boy. Coming back for me, ain't you? Absolutely, you bet. D, stay with her night and day. Night and day. You need to go look in them bushes, young. Yonder way. How many way up again? Four. That's four. Well, there's five of us. The odds are in our favor. So what are you looking so down about? Mr. Jake. He one of them. I seen his horses tracked. Well, these are horse thieves and murderers we're dealing with. They might have stole Jake's horse. No, sir. I know to track his horse to make Winnie riding it. Dang. Hope you're wrong, Deet. Yes, sir. But I ain't. Busters.
Sod busters. Didn't I tell you? You boys wait here. You too, Spoon. Dan hates sod busters. Hates their guts and livers. Bloody again, ain't he? Ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> Wants us to come on. Nothing but this old watch. Damn saw busters. You shot those two men for a watch. Shot them. Now I'm gonna hang them. Hang them? <laughs> Dan, you beat all. I never heard of hanging dead men. <laughs> shot them. Now I'm gonna hang them. Then I'm gonna burn them. <laughs> <laughs> Damn saw busters can't ever be too dead to suit me. Jake. You and Eddie go drag them fellas over here under this tree. No, I ain't no part of this. The hell you ain't. Side, ain't it? Damn sod busters. <laughs> Let's go gather our horses before they scatter. Wait till Gus gets back. Well, he might not be back for two, three days. He asked me to look after you. I don't want nobody looking after me but Gus. Well, it was Gus that told me. Well, I'm, I'm setting the plate out here by the flap. I'm looking after you like Gus said. I don't need no looking after. You don't have to stay. I don't mind. I got a grave digger to make a fortune in these parts. Got to buy you a bigger spade pee and go into business. Leave our pass on that. It's a bad bunch we're after. Bad as I ever seen. Newt, you all right? Gus, Jake couldn't have had nothing to do with this. Jake's always just kind of drifted, Newt. See, any wind can blow him. 
Come on, let's get these poor fellas planted. They're close. Half down by a creek. You seen them? I seen them. Four of them. Well? Yes, sir. Mr. Jake, one of them. I wish he'd had the good sense to stay with Lori. She might have aggravated him some, but she wouldn't have let him to this. Now, give me that. Save some of that for me, Dan. Why would I? You're lazy as Jake. Need if you pulls your weight in this outfit. Sit still, boys. Oh, you got fire. We're horse trainers. Well, hello, Gus. Kevin, get his gun, Deet. At least you don't think I'd try to shoot you, do you? Get your boots off, boys. Damn if we will. Didn't you hear me? I said he was horse traders. We're more persuaded by the bodies we just buried. Get your boots off. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You're a black liar, sir. Just ask Jake we didn't buy them horses. You buy them three cowboys you shot. You buy them two farmers you burn, pay you and Newt, get your ropes. Tie them up. Oh, you don't need to tie me. I'm new to... Hell, I didn't kill anybody. I just fell in with these boys to get through the territory. Hell, I was gonna leave them first chance I got. I wish you'd taken that chance a little earlier, Jake. A man will go along with five killings. Take me to leave a little slow. Go ahead, Newt. Well, Pete, you know me. I ain't no killer. Teach you know it, too. <laughs> Gus, I ain't no criminal. Now, you know that. It was Dan who killed them two sod buses. I didn't kill nobody. It's your damn mouth, Spoon. Put them on their horses. Where's he going? Pick out a tree to hang it from, son. Gus, how? You know how it works, Jake. You ride with an outlaw, you die with an outlaw. I'm sorry you crossed the line. I didn't see no lying, Gus. I was just trying to get through the territory. Back like in scalp, that's all. I'm sure that's true, Jake. You're all yellow. All of you. Else you would have fought me fair. Say goodbye to you, brother. Respect you got him into this. They ain't worth a red kiss. Near you. I'll say this for you, Suggs. You're the kind of man that's a pleasure to hand. If all you can talk is guff, go talk it to the devil. I should have been second. Little lady was the youngest. You're right. I'm sorry. Never meant to scare the boy's horse just then. You ready? Yes. So. I'd like to know that I got Lori back. Who? I'm sorry, sir. I've got to do this, Jake. I wish it had fallen to somebody else. What well, hell, boys? I damn sight I'd rather be hung by my friends than by a bunch of damn strangers. Boys, hope you won't hold it against me. Never meant no harm.
that square. Yes, sir, he died fine, didn't he? Well, let's go dig him a grave. Got a herd of cattle to look at. Jake wasn't no killer. Jake wasn't. Jake liked to joke. He didn't like to work. I got exactly those same feelings myself. Someone is coming. We already told her. Want me to kill a hen for supper, Mama? No, not yet. They might not be in the mood to stop. You girls go on about your chores, like I said. That wagon won't be here for a while. Mama, has Daddy talked to any today? No, not today. Are his eyes open? Yes, they're open. Well, why can't he talk then if his eyes are open? Because his head's hurt on the inside, honey, that's why. You couldn't talk neither if a horse kicked you in the head. Now you girls go on and do your chores. Rape ya! <laughs> I wish our boys had lived up. Wouldn't that be something? To still have all of them. These are my daughters, Sally and Betsy, and this is Cholo. Are we in Nebraska yet? Yes. Won't you get on down and rest a while? You know a fella named D-Boot? I'm going to Ogallala to find him. D-Boot? Si. Pistolero. Well, you missed Ogallala by about 20 miles. But you're welcome to stay the night here if you'd like. You can get on to town easily in the morning. I've come. All the way from Arkansas to find D. Why, well, you're pregnant. Oh. Quickly, take her in the house. Go on, draw some water. Go on, girls, hurry up. This woman's gonna have a baby. A baby? What? <laughs> got here on time. If she'd have had this baby out on the plains, I doubt either one of them would have lived. Which one of you is the father? Will I? Oh, get... Neither one, ma'am. Her husband's a sheriff down in Fort Smith, Arkansas. But it, it, it's this fellow D. Boot she's looking for. Can, can she go now? Go? Oh, no, she won't be going anywhere for at least a week. She's lost a lot of blood. That baby wants his supper. She does. Excuse us, please. Goodness, you 
you shouldn't be up. There. How's that? Well, you got a fine baby boy here. And a hungry one, too. Ma'am? Don't you want a baby, Mama? Sally? You go on and boil some milk. Betsy, you help her. You just rest now. We'll take care of this baby for you tonight. You'll feel better tomorrow, all right? Baby. What do you care? It ain't yours. Look, Ellie, we're in Ogallala. I'm cold. You got her the fever. <sighs> well, I ain't no doctor. Hold up, Dwight. Oh. Hey, you. We got us a sick woman here. Where's your doctor live? Don't know there is one. What's wrong with her? She's got the fever. Where's D? Who, ma'am? D. Boot. She's looking for him. You know D. Boot? I don't know him. I know where he is. He's right over in that jailhouse. Visitors. Who is it? It's me, T. Ellie. Ellie. <laughs> I left you lie. All I could think about was you. Big Sway and Luke brought me in the wagon. They're gonna hang me, Ellie. Next Friday, they're gonna hang me if they don't lynch me for. Hang you? Why, D? What for? I killed a boy. What do you do? Aggravate you? No. Just a settler's boy. I was just trying to scare him off for some cowman that hired me. And this boy, he just jumped the wrong way and I killed him. What's wrong that you got to be carried in like that, Ellie? I had a baby. But I left it so I could get here to you. All I've been able to think about is getting here to... My God, she's bleeding. Leah! Leah! You got the whole prairie if you want to scream. Be a grasshopper! Girls! Can't you resist? <laughs> Who 
We have another visitor, Signora. Pardon the commotion, sir. We're a loud bunch. Won't you get down? Why, thank you, but uh, I wouldn't want to trouble you. Oh, we grow our own troubles around here. Her names are Sally and Betsy. I'm Claire Allen. I'm July Johnson. I come from Arkansas. Well, come on in. I'll fix you something to eat. Sorry. I thought I forgot my manners. It's all right. I like to see a hungry mammy. You say you're from Arkansas, Mr. Johnson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fort Smith. I was a sheriff there. Not now. Mr. Johnson. Are you looking for your wife by any chance? Yes, I am. Is her name Elmira? How do you know? Your wife stopped here a couple of weeks ago in the company of two buffalo hunters. Ellie was here? She had this baby and he left the same night. What's the matter with him? Mr. Johnson, if you'll excuse us, we'll leave you alone a few minutes. Come on. Why is that man crying? Shh. I guess he's been looking for his wife a long, long time. But he's a man. Men have tears in them, same as you. showed up, didn't he? Mr. Johnson, I know you're tired. And I expect your heart sick over your wife. But I'm gonna say a terrible thing to you. I used to be ladylike, but this country's made me blunt. I don't believe that woman wants you or this child either one. She left here to go find a fella the name of Deep Boot in Ogallala. She never even looked at her baby. Oh, well, she had a hard trip. Maybe she was just addled. I like young things, Mr. Johnson. real quick. I'm getting real attached to him, Martin, here. I know he ain't mine, but he ain't your wife's anymore. Do you want him? I don't know what to do. Oh, it's been so long since I've done anything right. Can't even remember it. I lost my three boys. I'm only took them. I'll date young Martin here if you don't want him. But if you do want him, I wish you'd go right on and take him before I get too attached. I can't go through the heart sick of losing another one. I would like to ride into Ogallala first. And if I can't find Ellie. If you would allow me that. All right. Gonna be my first time in Ogallala. <laughs> Them boys getting all worked up thinking about whores and 
Ogallala. <laughs> you too, I imagine. <laughs> you mean Clara? What are you gonna do when you go see her? Leave me in the tent? Well, I'm gonna take you along and introduce you properly. Clara don't see another woman once a month. She'd be happy for feminine conversation. She'll know what I am. Yes. She'll recognize right off you're a fine human being. Now, you don't duck your head to nobody, Laurie. Not to Clara, not to me, not to nobody. I bet she's always been a lady, huh? Well, a lady can slice your jugular as quick as a Comanche. Claire's got a sharp tongue. She's, she's tomahawked me a, many a time in the past. <laughs> You'll like her. Gus, I'm afraid I'm gonna lose you. I'm afraid you're gonna marry her. Laura, you're working yourself into a sweat for nothing. Clara had two or three chances to marry me. And she didn't take them. She'd like to marry her, wouldn't <sighs> Yes, I would. I would. Levantate de Godina, ponte el vestido de seda. Hello, girl. I hear you're planning an orgy when we get to Ogallala. <laughs> <laughs> Fine for you to laugh. You got Lorena. What's good for me ain't necessarily good for the weak mind. <laughs> oh, I understand you tell fortunes. I can tell some fortunes. I don't know if I can tell yours. I don't want nobody telling mine. I might find out I'm gonna drown in the Republican River. We'd sure miss you, too. Wouldn't we, boys? <laughs> <laughs> Which river I drown in don't matter to me. It's just I'd like to know my matrimonial prospect. How many more times am I likely to marry? All right. You spit in the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> No more wives for you. Well, that's disappointing. I've only had two wives so far, and neither one of them lived that long. Figured I was due uh, one more. No. any dog, isn't he? He's been sitting out there ever since they brought you in. I'll bet he's asked me a thousand times if you were gonna live. And it's a wonder you did, of course, what with all the blood you've lost. Well, I've got my rounds to make. I'll look in on you when I get back. Found you, Ellie. The doctor said you're strong enough to talk. You don't have to talk, though, if you don't want to. Bad news. It 
real bad. Joe got killed. Him and Roscoe and a girl. Outlaw killed him. And I ought to have stayed with them, but That baby is fine, Ellie. I didn't know it was ours. She named him Martin. If, if that's all right with you. They hang D. I only got to see him for a minute, and then I fainted. And when I woke up, they'd already hanged him. You just rest now. I'll look in on you again in the morning. Last night, heard that big fella? I tried to dissuade him. Well, where to? St. Louis. I told him they might as well leave their scalps here if they're going that way. Well, it's the Sioux. Army's got them stirred up. Well, they're damn fools to go east, and I told them so, too. But she was set on leaving, and he didn't argue. Mr. Johnson, did you find your wife? Yes, I did. I guess you were right. She's gone on to St. Louis now. You, Mr. Johnson, you made your plans? Well, I always uh, lived in Arkansas. And how are you with horses? Horses. Well, Cholo's been doing all his own work, and Bob's too. I guess that can't go on forever. I'll offer you a job right here if you want it. Boy, well, I'm not sure I know all that much about horses. No. And you ain't lived any place but Arkansas either, have you, Mr. Johnson? But you ain't nailed down, and you ain't stupid, are you? You can learn, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I could.
He's sick, or...? No. He's fine. I guess he's just punishing you for ignoring him all this time. Here, Mr. Johnson. Meet your son. That's a good sign. I guess he'd at least catch him if somebody threw him off a roof. Who knows? Might even come to like you. There you are. Just like a preacher in that frock coat. Get those water barrels, Paul, won't he? Yeah, let's go. Go? I thought as long as we're in town, we'd have us a meal and talk some philosophy. I don't know a philosophy. Now, let's go. I don't like being away from the herd most of these boys in town. I'll take it. Well, your philosophy is you worry too much. Now, Jake would have gone with us quick enough if we hadn't a hung. Well, damn it, he brought that on himself, Augustus. Well, I know that, Woodrow. It's just I remember what a fine companion he always was around supper time. What's all that right there? Thanks for Lori. Well, I see what you got in the way of. Combs, brushes, and a hand mirror. Women like to see what they look like. Ain't that right, Woodrow? So I guess you're the one that know about that. Throw me in a parasol, too, would you? Fish yonder. We'll ask him. Yeah, I bet you he'd know. Dish. Hey, howdy, boys. You having a good time? Dish, we're looking for some horn, but we really don't know where to look. <laughs> well, you see that saloon yonder? There's plenty of oars in there. Thanks, Dish. I got to put the service for How much is it going to cost me? You got no gold coins? No. What do you mean, don't Well, what's keeping you boys? I thought you wanted a whore. We don't know how much they cost. Depends on how long you want to stay with them. Long enough, I reckon. But how much for that? Well, it varies from girl to girl. I met a nice one a minute ago over there named Mary. She's got a friend they call a buffalo heifer. I reckon they do for you boys. Come home. Can't expect top quality first time off. Afternoon, gentlemen. I'm Captain Weaver. This is Dixon, our scout. We're looking for fresh horses. Ours are putting their war out, chasing Red Cloud. That's a nice looking animal you got right there. Well, thank you. I like him myself. I'll take him and uh, any others you got. He's not for sale. I ain't asking. I'm telling you. I'm requisitioning that horse uh, for the government. I'm telling you, he's not for sale. You defy the U.S. Army. That's treason. You cowboys can be hung for treason. <laughs> now, how much for that gelding? He's not for sale. Huh. <laughs> 
You damn cowboys are too fond of your horses. Are you gonna dismount? Or do I have to drag you off that pile of soap bones to settle with you? Huh. Now ain't you a tomcat. <laughs> Now teach you to sass me, cowboy. Go on, get his horse. No, sir, this horse ain't for sale. This just told you that. You cowboys are pests. Even your pups. Now give me that horse. No, sir. I said give me that horse. No, sir. Damn you. No, sir. Damn. Give me that horse. No, sir. Give him to me. This ain't for sale. Give me the horse. Let him go. Give me that horse. Hey, quit that. Sir, he just squirted me a little bit. Newt wouldn't let him take Dish's horse. I'm much obliged to you for that, Newt. That's all right, Dish. Come in and go right now. There ain't much left to go with. Just get what there is, Sergeant. You bring the wagon? I'll bring it. rude behavior in a man. Won't tolerate it. All right, Timber, bring on. Don't do the anger. Woodrow F. Call, does it? I never seen the captain so robbed before, Gus. He was likely to kill that man. Well, why wouldn't he? Him beat you like that. His own son. His own son? Here, you boys can build a frolic before we start out to the far north. Here. 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 Hey, gents, welcome. That's us. <laughs> Who's gonna knock? Not me. I ain't gonna knock. Well, you know, maybe we ought to have us another beer or two first. Right. German Ellen! <laughs> <laughs> Well, can you play? Because this pony don't buck for free. Was well, this enough? Woo! 
by Mary. Looks like we got us a bunch of rich cattlemen here after all. Well, you boys, now you come on in. And I'm gonna take you, honey. Uh, maybe you will, maybe you won't. And I seen him first, so I ought to have dibs. Well, have at them, then. These two here will suit me just fine. Come on, boys. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, where are you going? Not me. I ain't going in there. Come on, cowboy. Skin them pants off. We ain't got all day for you, little pants off. Mr. Johnson sure is a hard worker, ain't he, Mama? Yes, he is. And he sure has learned a lot about horses since he's been here, too. His wife ought to have loved him instead of running off and getting killed by the Indians. Odd ain't worth as much as a gnat when you're talking about love. She loves somebody else. Do you still love Daddy? Even like that? He can't help how he is. He got his head kicked. I wish he'd get well. Thinking of death, Mama. You're doing everything you can for him. Somebody's coming. I'm going to. Careful of Martin, he ain't a stick of wood. Come on, Mama, let's see who it is. Your mama works your hard? Uh-huh. Where's your mama right now? She's inside. Well, pretty as ever. Introduce your friends. Well, well, you know Woodrow. How do you do? And this here is uh, Miss Lorena Wood. She's come all the way with us from Lonesome Dove. Well, I don't know whether to envy or to pity you, Miss Wood, riding all this way with Mr. McCray here. I know he's entertaining, but that much entertainment <laughs> would break a person for life. <laughs> Oh, and, uh, that there's Newt. Howdy, man. Newt who? Newt Dobbs, ma'am. Captain McCray. Well, Sheriff Johnson. Never thought I'd see you again. <laughs> well, I <laughs> guess, as they say, it's, a. Uh, it's a small world. I guess it is, Gus. You must know everybody well, in it by now. <laughs> Girls, you go on fetch three pullets. I thought we might have a picnic later. Oh, my, let's do. I understand your husband has horses for sale. Oh, Bob's upstairs sick. July, you and Cholo show the captain what we got. I'll come down later and price them after you made your picks. All right. Come on in. <laughs> You're that sheriff from Arkansas, ain't you? Wanna come looking for Jake's food? Well, seems like a long time ago now. I guess I'm not looking for him anymore. Well, that's good, because he fell in with a bad bunch and we hung him. What happened to Sheriff Johnson's wife? Indians got her. So you adopted them both, father and the baby? You was always one to grab Clara. Listen to him. Hadn't seen me in 16 years and still feels free to criticize. Mm -hmm. No, it was really young Martin there I wanted. As time goes on, I got less and less use for grown men. Well, the years hadn't taken your bloom, Clara. I'll say that for you. You have to forgive us, Miss Wood. Gus and I were sweethearts once. 
I know, Gus told me. Pretty here. Almost pretty as that little spot down in Texas where we used to picnic, ain't it? You remember that? Of course I do. I even stopped there for a few minutes on my way up here. Claire's Orchard. That was a happy place for us, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. So, Gus, what'd you achieve all those years in Lonesome Dove? Not much. Shot a few Mexican bandits. Drank a lot of whiskey. That's all you did. You could have done it right here in Aguilar and been a friend to me. I lost my three boys, but I needed a friend. Well, you was married, Claire. I, I, I didn't think it proper. I was never so married I couldn't have managed a friend. Well, I wish you'd have wrote and told me that. I did write you. You did? I wrote you lots of times. I tore up the letters, though. I figured if you didn't come of your own accord, I didn't have any use for you anyway. <laughs> I like your young girl. What was she doing in Lonesome Dove? Doing what you could, but don't hold it against her. Oh, I don't judge women that harsh. I might have done the same myself under some circumstances. Well, I doubt that, Clara. <laughs> you think you know so much about women, Gus. But you don't. You're way overrated in that regard. I got that you're sassy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm honest. You always yeah. did take that for being sassy. <laughs> that Newt's about the same age my Jimmy would be. He to live. Newt's a fine boy, really is. So you know Captain Calls, his father? Yeah. I told him just the other day. Woodrow wouldn't. Yeah. You know Woodrow. Yeah, I know Woodrow. And I detest him. I always have. Rankles me, got so much of you, and I got so little over the years. I think I have better claim. <laughs> well, I wish I had to come, Clara. I wish I'd have come a long time ago. I really do. business taking her up to a wild place like Montana. Well, I doubt she'd stay. Well, she might if you'd stay out of it. She'll only die or get killed age before her time like I have. Well, I can't see that you've aged that much. Well, I have, and so have you, although I doubt you'll admit it. Well, the older the violin, the sweeter the music. Now, you ever hear that? Yeah, I heard it, Gus, many times before. <laughs> Watch Woodrow when she names her prize. Now, wait a minute. Let me know. Woodrow finally met his match. She didn't budge a penny, did she? Nope, she sure didn't. Newt, see that little sorrel over there with the star in his forehead? I want you to have him. Captain? See that little sorrel over there with the star on his forehead? I'm giving him to Newt. You're giving him to Newt? I'm making him a gift of that horse. You can deduct him from the price later. I feel better knowing you was well mounted up there in Montana. Thank you very much, ma'am. And thank you for that picnic, too. I mean, it was very special. I've never been on one before. Oh, we enjoyed having you. I want you to know, if Montana don't suit you, you can come back here anytime you want. I'll give you all the work you can stand. I like that. Hey! I'm best go help the cat. Thank you. 
I do believe you'd adopt the whole bunch if you could. <laughs> I like that boy. Sally likes him, too. You should be about ready to marry when Sally comes of age. Oh, God, Clara. <laughs> you. <laughs> Come on, Gus. I want you to see Bob before you go. Why don't she give you that horse? Well, I don't know. She just did. She wouldn't give a nickel on these, turn around and gives you one for free. That don't make no sense at all. Women. So why'd you come here with Carl? Truth is, I was hoping I'd find you a widow, Clara. And I didn't miss for much either. You missed by years, Gus. You had a long ride for nothing. Well, anyway, it's happiness itself to see you, Clara. I'm surprised you dare bring that woman into my house. Well, I thought you liked Lori. I do like her. I mind, though. She's so young and pretty. Well, I told you what happened. It's an accident she's even on this trip. Oh, I never noticed you having accidents with ugly girls. Well, just been lucky, I guess. I don't know. You were my dream, Gus. All these years, you've been my dream. I used to think about you two or three hours a day. I wish I'd have known that. I didn't want you here. Not really. I knew you for a rake and a rambler. <laughs> but it sure was nice pretending you loved only me. Well, I do only love you, Clara. I've grown right fond of Lori here, but it ain't like this feeling I got for you. She loves you. Don't you know it would destroy her if you were to stay here with me? Yeah, I do know that. Destroy her if I said stay. I expect so. That ain't an answer, Gus. You know I would, Clara. I'd smother Bob there and send Lori to prediction. Let's talk. I would. Oh. Bob will die when he has a mind to. I'll probably have to sit back and watch you father four or five children in your old age. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just her beauty that set me off. Well, pretty ain't everything. Hey, you're still pretty, Claire. You're still the deceiving man you've always been, Gus. With your permission, Bob. I like a kiss. <laughs> Come on. Now stop it. I swear you beat any woman I ever saw for taking the starch out of a man. You still in the mind to marry me, Gus? I don't know, Clara. I really don't. <laughs> no. I won't marry again. I haven't got enough respect for men. And I've met very few who are honest, Gus. You ain't one of them. I'm about half honest. That's the truth. Come on. <laughs> No place for a lady. <sighs> lady. Oh, do Miss Wood, please do. Please do. We can sell some new dresses. Gus, 
Will you come back? You bet I'll be back. Ladies man like me can't be expected to resist such a parcel of beauty. <laughs> Better warn you though, these girls will wear you out. You're gonna wish you were back in cow camp by the time this is over. <laughs> well. Good, that's settled then. Come on, girls. Let's go fix Miss Wood's room. Well, I'll come with you, Gus, if you want. It's just that it's real nice here, and she's so friendly. I'm happy for you to stay. You spend enough time in that dirty old tent. I never even thought about staying until she asked. You still want to marry her? No. Well, I don't see why not. Well, times have changed. Me and Clara both. Well, I can't imagine anything changing you, Gus. You will come back, won't you? Yeah, sure, I'll come back. You probably won't want me then. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? Well, you discovered by then that there's something in this old world besides me. You'll find that there's others that treat you decent. Well, there's none like you, Gus. Going. It's cheap land, not three days' ride from here, Gus. I don't see why you have to go up to Montana where the Indians cannot fight you. Well, it's where we started for. Me and Woodrow have always liked to get where we started for, even if it don't make a damn bit of sense. Well, it don't. Well, I know it don't. I'd like to see at least one more place that ain't settled before I take up the rocking chair. Part of the country settled. Well, you're here, Clara. Pretty soon it won't be nothing but a schoolhouse. <laughs> Glory, darling. Lady. Jake lied to her. What if Montana ain't the paradise he said it was? What if it's all like this? No grass, no water, no nothing. That beats. to see if that termination can get us to the next 80 miles with no water. What are we doing way up here, Mr. Gus? This ain't our country. Woodrow set on being the first man to graze cattle in Montana. And there ain't no change in his mind about that. Man, 
plan on not to leave his own country, go wandering around like this. Captain, wake up. We're here. Morning, girls. Twelve of our horses are missing. Indians got them. Dates found their tracks. They come sneaking up here on foot last night. Guess it was just their charity they didn't steal the whole bunch. I doubt any of you sleeping beauties would have known. Them darn Indians got our horses. They might decide to come back and get us. You boys are gonna get the drizzles if you don't relax. Well, they got Custer, didn't they? He fought Indians his whole life. Let's go, Gus. We got some horse thieves to track down. I got him just when I was getting comfortable. This, you keep these cattle grazing right up and down this little creek bottom. I don't want them wore out before we strike for the Fowler River. You ready, Gus? Well, hell yes, I'm ready, Woodrow. Don't I look ready? <laughs>
sure this is worth it for 12 horses? Well, we can't start putting up with horse theft. You know that. Camps ahead. Draw with a little water. How many? Couldn't be too many, hell. A, a chigger could live in this country. Uh, mostly women and children. I didn't see no more than a couple young boys fighting age. Too darn hot to fight anyhow. I say we wait until night and then steal the nags back. They're starving, Captain. They done cut up one horse already. I got you mean. They stole our horses from me. They real poor. Well, they're just having a picnic. We had one ourselves the other day without nobody shooting at us. I ain't gonna shoot them. Just gonna scare them off so we can get our horses back. We'll leave them two Unac Myers standing there. They can eat them. <laughs> Poor little boy's blind. He can't see nothing. Deets, don't, don't, Deets. Take care of you. What you crying about? Here. You want you wanna play with something? Yeah. <laughs> play with that? <laughs> hey, he's all right now. He just spread everybody run off and left him. Hey, they set that baby down! They think you're trying to steal him! Here, take him. I, I just help him. I guess it's our fault we should have shot sooner. I don't want to start thinking, Woodrow, about all the things that we should have done for this good man. <laughs> 